welcome to all the atma jyotis let us today contemplate on uh, aparoksha anubhuti's day one talk by shri prabhu ji so we have picked up uh, these questions from there so today uh, we'll begin with the uh, question 1 2 and 3 shilpa kala ji you shared the your views on question number 1 today let us begin by your views on question number 2 and 3 yes sir um, so what is the qualification for studying uh, Aparoksha Anubhuti and why it is important? So uh, the qualifications which are required is uh, uh, Viveka and Vairagya and uh, the Shat Sampatis that is uh, Shama, Dama, Titiksha, Uparati, Shraddha, uh, Samadhan and Mumukshatva. Um, so uh, why is it important? Uh, it's important because uh, um, having these qualities will uh, will uh, uh, help us to remove the uh, duality and uh, help us to make the right decisions. So that is what I feel. So. Can you elaborate further? Um, so the, the study of the Vedanta yes, is, is uh, also said as you know the way to remove the ignorance, yes, but there's a qualification even to study. Um, how, how is it so? Can you elaborate? Um, because uh, the qualification, so it it acts as a support sir, to uh, um, in in what way it supports you feel why why okay so let's put the question slightly differently okay sir. So, so does it mean that you know uh, if let's say uh, when does anyone take up uh, vedanta study So when, uh, uh, so when you want to uh, grow spiritually and uh, so honestly, people come into spirituality when there is, uh, you know, uh, uh, you uh, when you ask yourself a question like, is there anything more than, you know, this, when you start questioning your own existence, that's when that's when there is some kind of a spiritual journey i yes, want to yes. understand right yes 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 okay yes. so now okay so either either people are suffering and they want to come out of the suffering and yes, somebody sir. says uh, okay why don't you uh, study bhagavad gita or get into some spiritual yes, class you will find the solace or people come into it because you know somebody says you know go to that guru and your uh, disease will be cured so like that People come into spirituality uh, seeking something. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Now, is is all kind of seeking, um, what is that? Uh, so, for example, when somebody comes, um, I have a disease and I want the disease to be removed. And uh, uh, I have heard uh, great powers that you have. Can my disease be removed? Is that the uh, kind of the seeker that... Um, is, is ripe for Vedanta? Uh, <clears throat> so initially, maybe he comes, he joins with that intention, but uh, it's only when the journey begins that, uh, you know, when uh, he clearly understands what actually is Vedanta and what are the qualities which he requires to develop to be able to uh, get rid, uh, rid or remove the disease. Excellent. So what you are saying is, so though the seeking may be for removing the disease, as one comes into the path, they there is a certain uh, journey before they become ready for Vedanta. Correct? Yes. Huh. So now Vedanta is saying that, you know, one needs to have developed all this uh, 
the, what is what it calls as a sadhana chatushtaya. Like you said, viveka vairagya shatsampati mumukshatva. Yes. Then only uh, Vedanta says you can begin the study of Vedanta. Yes. Sir. Huh. So now can you elaborate further? So someone who, who was suffering has come into the path and yes. is now speaking. And now Vedanta says, hey, don't, don't already pick up Vedanta and study, but first develop these uh, qualities. Why is it so? Yes. So because uh, these qualities would uh, help us to uh, um, to increase our awareness levels. Uh, to uh, it'll help us purify ourselves ourselves to a certain extent before. Very nice. Um, purify ourselves. Okay, can you dig deeper into that? What do you mean by purify ourselves? So, um, so uh, uh, with the help of these qualities, like uh, if you know, uh, if I use Viveka and Vairagya in the right way, mm. so. Uh, So that is how uh, we uh, we will, uh, you know, uh, uh, the discrimination will help us to uh, detach ourselves. Huh. See, to purify ourselves means there is some impurity, right? Yes. See, if I have dirt on the hand, I take water yes, and then I wash. That is how I, be I, I feel, okay, I've become pure now. Yes. Sir. So like that, where is the impurity? So impurity would be uh, in the mind, right? Excellent. In what way impurity exists? Where, where do you see impurity? So, uh, so for impurity, uh, so the example would be it's like uh, if the water is muddy, hmm. and uh, uh, you know if I uh, let. Uh, let the water settle for some time. Mm. The dirt will automatically settle at the bottom and I'll get a clean water on top. Mm. So, uh, so to purify the mind, yes, uh, I would uh, have to um, make it um, uh, try and be peaceful. Huh. So, excellent. That's a very good analogy. See, like, like uh, the, the dirt in the hand or dirt in the water, what is that impurity in the mind that, you know, we, we have to uh, consciously remove? So, so impurity of mind would be uh, uh, negative thoughts, mm. lack of concentration, mm. uh, Restlessness, mm. trying to uh, move from one, uh, you know, from moving from one place to another, like, you know, how a monkey jumps from one tree to another tree to another tree. Uh, mm. That would uh, be yeah, uh, restlessness, right? So that can come under restlessness. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. What else? So if let's say uh, you are saying, okay, one is I want to be able to remove restlessness, which means I want to develop concentration. Yes. Yes. Okay. Then uh, uh, that is one kind of a impurity that you have to remove. So for that, you have to do yes. some uh, uh, practice. Yes. Okay. Yes. Is concentration alone enough? So why there are nine nine things, you know, in that sadhana chatushtaya, viveka, vairagya, shat, sampati, mumukshatva. Yes, sir. 
yeah uh so concentration alone would not be enough concentration mm. would be uh, I, i would say a base and then you can uh, build the other qualities uh on it excellent so how do you build those qualities <clears throat> so by being mindful okay of what uh, i am doing in my daily uh, activities if i am mindful yeah then i can build up those qualities so being mindful helps us to develop those qualities yes yes among these uh, qualities that you see um why is it again the question now is why is it important for the study of vedanta okay concentration i can understand if the mind is jumping somewhere somewhere i cannot uh, yes. uh, sit and listen right yes sir okay so let's say i have developed concentration why is it not alone enough to sit and study vedanta why does it talk about viveka why does it talk about vairagya why does it talk about shat sampatti why does it talk about mumukshatva and then only it says now you are ready for uh, vedanta so <clears throat> concentration itself is not enough that is true so um so if uh, if my concentration is good mm. but then still i do not uh, i am not peaceful mm. or uh, if i am not making the right uh, decisions mm. uh it will still not help me in this uh, path so excellent because, so what is uh, the right decision what, what do we mean by right decision uh, you you are indicating viveka right yes sir yes uh, sir. so what is that right decision that uh, uh, we need to be making um so the right decision would be uh, uh, would be to uh, you know uh, following all the shat sampatti so that is excellent shama dama vidiksha mm. mm. uparati so all these qualities so i have to use my viveka to develop the shat sampatti yes sir. excellent excellent but what is the value see for example uh, to to study engineering i need to know math i need to know uh, physics i need to know chemistry um, like that and and i need to know some english so these are the four let's say uh, knowledge or uh, uh, abilities to uh, i i i need to develop let's say i have to study engineering like that it it it, it why because a topic that we're going to study contains all this there will be some advanced mathematics there will be some advanced physics so therefore i need to know makes sense yes. right yes, so like sir. that study of vedanta what has that got to do with these qualities is it that you know you're going to study more and more about uh, shat sampatti is it that you're going to study more and more about uh, um, say uh, shraddha or is it that you're going to study more and more about uh, samadhana so um so uh, of course uh, when we study it will uh, uh, help us to understand all these qualities right so mm. but so, now that now that you are exposed to tatva bodha also yes in tatva bodha yes sir prabodha uh, you know doesn't uh, help you to develop shraddha doesn't help you to develop samadhana right yes sir it yes, says sir. that this is prerequisite 
you should already have this qualification. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and the study itself has no reference to Shraddha Samadhana. Yes, sir. But engineering is not like that, no. Uh, I have studied math and I'm going to be using math and I'll be going a little more deeper, you know, maybe some advanced mathematics. Yes, sir. So, so yeah, yeah. So, so engineering is, uh, you have to study, you have mm. to gain that knowledge and then, you know, you would uh, then become an engineer. Mm. But uh, all these qualities, so they are already there in us. We just hmm. have to uh, recognize them. Correct. So, uh, so these qualities will help us to understand the limitations, uh, uh, limitations of uh, all the attachments in the world, sir. And it will help us. Uh, in Atma Jnana. Hmm. So what is the focus of study in Vedanta? The focus of studying Vedanta is sir, to develop detachment from the world. To be a witness rather than to be a doer, to be involved in uh, to be too much involved in your action. Hmm. So, so uh, to to develop, to become a witness is why the study of Vedanta is is that what you are saying? Uh, yes, sir. Means it will help me to realize hmm. that I am much more than much more than uh, I. It will help me realize my true, uh, yes, my true self. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So what does the word Vedanta itself mean to you? So Vedanta is end of knowledge. Right, sir. So it is it is when, when uh, I have, uh, means when I know my true self mm. is when, when I know that uh, That Brahman is in me and in others as well. When I recognize that, when there is no duality, mm. when when I know that, that is when that is for me. That is the end of knowledge. That is Vedanta. That's what it is. Excellent, excellent. So uh, Vedanta is clear. Now to study Vedanta, there is a gating prerequisite. So this is the this is the identification recognition that I need to come to, right? Yes. Now, anyone with the sufficient uh, uh, intelligence, you can go and uh, uh, teach them uh, word by word of Vedanta. They will also yes. uh, memorize. They will also be able to. Uh, if if you ask them, uh, say, what is Brahman, uh, or if you ask them, what is Aprakshanabhuti, they will also be able to say. But why does Vedanta study uh, says qualification is important? Because so all that you are doing is studying, right? About yes, I am not yes, any of these five bodies. Uh, anybody uh, can uh, also study this. Yes, sir. Hmm. So, but uh, qualification uh, uh, is what these are the qualities that would. Uh, the qualification will help us in developing these qualities, right, sir? Correct. So unless I have these qualities, I mean, anyone can study. Mm. But if I'm not following it in my daily life, I'm not using it. Mm. I'm not applying it. Mm. Then uh, it's of no use, sir. Just studying Uh, in, what, in, in what way it is not useful? Uh, what there, there is a fine distinction, right? Anybody yes. can study because these books are available, talks are available. Anybody can study. Yes, sir. But 
anybody studying will it have the same result is is the question clear is the is the so, uh, the i missed on the question maybe there was some uh, sir your uh, voice broke i think there was some connection internet, problem yeah, yeah. all right let me repeat so anybody studying vedanta versus someone who has uh, uh, gone through the sadhana chatushtaya and is ripe for vedanta is there a distinction is there a distinction you know anybody can study anybody with sufficient uh, ability to know sanskrita or maybe uh, right kind of uh, understanding of the uh, sanskrit or uh, having the right concentration can also study vedanta yes sir is the result of such a study is it same as someone who has developed the sadhana chatushtaya the, the shat sampati and who has mastered the sadhana chatushtaya so such a person also studying vedanta is the outcome in these two cases is it the same or different so the uh, outcome is different so because the person who is uh, uh, practicing a uh, sadhana chatush so sorry i get it that's okay yeah chatushtaya chatushtaya uh. will uh, um is uh, uh how should i say uh, is on the path of recognition has already started walking on the path of recognizing his true self whereas the person who is uh, just studying and not uh, uh is not applying those qualities hmm uh, maybe he knows all the qualities but he is not using it in his uh, uh he is not practically using it just studying the theory at times doesn't help maybe there is some uh, you know some knowledge you would get but mm. unless you practice uh, practice that's only when you can refine yourself that's excellent I... excellent um i i, I see that uh, deepa ji also has joined um uh, and deepa ji you may not you may not be in a position sorry hari om sir hari om yeah you may be in position to interact you are you're not in a position to interact yeah i can interact now you can interact okay all right wonderful uh, are you following the conversation uh, with the shilpa kala ji yes sir we are focusing on the second question what is the qualification for studying uh, uh, aparoksha anubhuti and why is it important okay sir that is a question that you know we are digging deeper yeah <clears throat> so you've heard shilpa kala ji so far yes sir uh, yeah so before uh, you you also share your views shilpa kala ji is there anything more you want to add to that second question oh uh, no sir uh, i'm done so, so your your <laughs> summary of uh, what you are saying is transformation is uh, is 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 the importance so somebody yes. who is simply studying will not be transformed whereas someone who is uh, wanting to be transformed uh, is the, is the one who is ripe is what you are saying yes sir and yes. to be transformed you should have developed these qualities is what you are saying yes sir okay all right yeah deepa ji what are your views these qualifications are required because uh suppose i'm not into vedanta like i joined the class because my sister insisted me uh, to join but then i was not applying it though i could understand the talks of prabhu ji mm. only when i uh well on it i think it's possible to at least try to apply the, those things uh like uh, shilpa kala ji said these are the qualities that we have already but uh, uh i think because of our because of our conditioning 
we don't recognize those things just go on with the uh, whatever we feel is right so i think these qualifications uh, they are required for studying uh, these Ved uh, vedantic texts why so why 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 does it uh, again and again uh, say that it is important to have developed these uh, qualities you said you know even uh, even without developing the qualities you could understand but what is the difference it makes i won't be applying those things isn't isn't it sir but now at least i try to apply the, these things hmm. i think uh, where am i going wrong hmm. otherwise that question uh, wouldn't have come in my mind that i'm also going somewhere wrong because of which all these things are going wrong hmm. so these things will help me So you are also saying that application is important. Yes, sir. Okay. And what is the outcome of this application? So, so for example, you know, if I if I apply pressure on a tooth uh, paste, paste comes out. So outcome of applying pressure is paste comes out. Yes, sir. Uh, if I add uh, salt to water, water becomes salty. So like that, yes. that's an outcome. Like that. What is the outcome here that you know uh, you're striving towards? For now, the outcome is that uh, I'm able to think with clarity because uh, earlier when my child used to get sick, I used to be uh, panicking. Hmm. Now I don't do it. Hmm. <laughs> I, I start applying the knowledge that it is all mithya mm. and it's going to disappear mm. so vedanta is really helping me excellent so you are able to see day-to-day uh, -day applications yes sir huh. is there anything more to it other than that um Like when it comes to Shama, mm. I have uh, control over my mind mm. now. Mm. Then uh, control over the sense organs as well. Because, uh, you know, when I think of uh, my mother, she has got diabetes. My father had diabetes. Mm. So I just try to keep control on my sense organs. Mm. Whenever I feel like having some sweets, mm. I keep a control. Mm. Then I used to watch a uh, uh, few vid videos that uh, are of no use, I feel, but still people keep watching them. Mm. Now I just go through the videos which will help me, like in, uh, I mean, like Vedantic videos. Mm. Mm. I feel whenever uh, others are watching them, I feel they are of no use. Why mm. are they watching? Mm. So I'm also applying Dhamma. Mm. Then yeah, I'm able to withstand the uh, pain mm. to a certain extent. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mind going towards uparati, mind going towards higher purpose for enjoyment. Mm. I'm trying to do it uh, mm. by meditating. Mm. Uh, but uh, here, I think I'm not able to. I fail most of the time. Not able to concentrate. During meditation? Yeah. Okay. And when you say that, what do you mean? Um, I mean, uh, my mind would be wandering here and there, sir. 
Uh, I, if I count, uh, I could uh, meditate properly, not more than five times uh, since the time I have started meditating. Mm -hmm. So the, the, this is where uh, it's not working at all. Mm. Uh, does it happen also, let's say, during the uh, contemplation sessions? No, sir. I will be able to concentrate on each and every point that you say. How, how is it then different? What is happening? So it is not that uh, it is incorrect to then say that, you know, I cannot concentrate. Uh, correct? Yes, sir. Huh. So what is the difference? The difference is... Uh, I think I enjoy these uh, sessions mm. and will be having an interest to know something more from others as well. Mm. That's the difference, sir. How others think about uh, anything uh, uh, which you ask mm. and how, how do I think? Mm. Trying to correlate my thoughts with theirs. Excellent. So there's an active, very conscious engagement of the thought process, right? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Whereas what you called as meditation, what is the meditation technique that you are following? Just concentrating on the breath. Okay. Now, concentrating on the thoughts when somebody is speaking and correlating, is that different yeah. from concentrating on the breath. So is this not meditation and is that the only meditation? I don't know, sir. I thought that is only the meditation because meditation is just sitting uh, quiet, concentrating on yourself. I mean, the self. Okay, so let's understand a little deeper. Uh, though it may be slight deviation from the main point, but it is important. What is meditation according to you? Meditation is to concentrate on myself. To try to go deeper where mm. I feel very calm. Mm. And uh, see something different from uh, what I see um in uh, in the in uh, on day to day basis sir okay when i could concentrate properly i felt like i am in some other world hmm. like you said um uh, i could do it not more than five five times hmm. when i came out of the meditation hmm. i felt like uh, i was in some other world that hmm. was wonderful hmm. It was like that, like mm. uh, when we are in deep sleep mm. and we wake up, mm. how do we feel? It was um, really wonderful today. Mm. I had good sleep. It was like that. It was like that. Okay. Now, do you feel a similar way when you have done the contemplation in a very active uh, way of listening to others and uh, listening to correlate? Do you feel a similar sense or different? Uh, uh, both your sessions and uh, Padmaji's session, really I feel they are all wonderful, sir. I feel that, very... That's okay. That's not the question I'm raising. I'm, uh, the question I want you to focus on is the end result of an active contemplation, mm. and the end result of a, what you said as, you know, I will sit and close my eyes and watch the breath. Are they same or are they different? Uh, very much the same. Do you feel peaceful at the end of uh, it? Yes, sir. You feel relaxed? Yeah, yeah, sir. You feel energized? Yeah, and that will be like helping, helping me throughout the week. Right. So yes, then now, now please come back again. If the outcome is the same, then the yeah. process you have followed, yeah. can we not name them similarly? Yeah. Yes, sir. 
both are meditation ah so now let us therefore come back again so what is meditation then so anything uh, uh, that we do and uh, after which uh, we feel peaceful calm and wonderful uh, at the same time um, help me in some way or the other is meditation sir excellent now let's understand what made you calm and peaceful right yes sir. when you are watching the breath yes sir when you are watching the breath if some other thought pops up in your mind what is it you did i was just trying to come out of that thought sir so you 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 I gently know. told your mind hey come back let's watch the breath correct uh, yes sir okay so as you kept on watching the breath what happened to the thoughts some other thought would pop up again would pop up again but at least sometimes you feel that the number of thoughts are reducing correct yeah yes sir okay so what did you do there to the thought did you say i don't want this thought or you simply brought your attention back to the breath yeah uh, i i simply brought attention back to the breath excellent uh, right thinking that uh, these are all uh, waste thoughts let me come back yeah so you 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 did not dwell upon the thoughts you simply yeah. brought your focus back to the breath correct yes sir you neither rejected nor accepted those thoughts you let them be yeah right now we are sitting here talking there must yes. be so many things going around you yes sir if you just simply notice there must be so many sounds going around you yes sir you're not interacting with those thoughts now with those sounds now no sir so they simply come and go yeah now during contemplation also there's a active particular thought that you are paying attention to right yes sir even now as you are speaking if some other sound comes you are saying let it be yeah so yeah, now yes, tell sir. me now tell me though in 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 this contemplation there is a particular thought that you are dwelling upon yeah in the so called breath meditation it's a breath that you are dwelling upon yeah but what is it you are doing you are saying let it be to the others yes sir correct no yes sir so as you continue to do that yeah. where it is taking you to a place called as peace yeah yeah now from where did that peace emerge it is from my mind itself my mind thinks uh, this way that uh, i'm not able to concentrate because no no that's uh, not the question i'm asking you uh, yeah focus on the question the question is so whether you know when you are looking at the breath and letting the other thoughts be hmm. are during contemplation focusing on the question and what the answers others are giving yeah as you continue to do that you 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 entered into a place called peace you felt yes. peaceful correct that's how you describe it yes. yeah where was that place did it come because of the thought did it come because of the breath that is what i felt my self felt sir that is what you felt right so what was, was that was that feeling called as peace uh, was it there in the yeah. thought uh, is the feeling called peace was no. it there in the breath no where was it it is what uh i give it the name 
peace you gave because, it a name yeah some some kind of a feeling yeah. some kind of yes. a feeling you're yes. giving it a label correct yeah but my question is where where was that feeling or where is that feeling from where is it coming it's from my mind itself sir from uh, you are feeling my... it through your mind but feeling it through mind, from where is it coming my soul so it's from soul is... soul, right yeah it must already be there right yeah it is already there but i am recognizing it ha huh. so the recognition process is meditation Hmm. so when you recognize then what does it mean any process can be a process to recognize no yes sir so through an active uh, contemplation if it helps you to recognize hmm. through a breath observation it helps you to recognize hmm. through a uh japa it helps you to recognize hmm. the process of recognition the process the tool hmm. breath is the tool the japa is the tool the contemplation is the tool is the tool important or the recognition important recognition itself is important excellent whatever the tool that is fine but uh, i should recognize that i am peaceful that your very nature is peace yeah and how did you recognize that simply by neither accepting nor rejecting or in other words mm. simply by not interacting with your thoughts mm. when you simply said let it be yes sir let the thought let the sounds go on let the thoughts go on hmm. and i simply am there yeah that is what helped you to bring hmm. recognition of the thing called as peace yes sir now that recognition of peace can happen in many it has happened many situations not just only when you sat in uh, uh, sat observing your breath Hmm. there must have been so many other situations early in the life also when you have felt that yes sir but why it did not become a permanent feature or your own uh, permanent feature because i was not ready to recognize it because you did not bring the right kind of gnana to recognize that that is what i have been looking for yeah that ultimately all the thing that i'm doing is for this thing called as peace yes sir and that is inherent hmm. i don't have to do anything to be peaceful hmm. do you agree with that statement yes sir did you have to breathe then only you became peaceful no 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 sir do you have to contemplate and only then you become peaceful uh contemplation uh actually will uh, keep on reminding me correct what what uh, that breath awareness what contemplation is doing is yeah the mind is so full of noise yeah. that attention was on the noise so therefore the self recognition of peace wasn't there yes sir so the breath awareness or the contemplation are keeping them away and then giving focus to recognition yes sir so it is not that you are becoming peaceful because of meditation yeah you are peace Yeah. meditation is a process to recognize that peace yes sir 
does this bring clarity yes sir so what is the original question why we went in into this digging what is qualification for studying aparoksha anubhuti why is it important now during that you made one particular statement i was yes. saying uh -huh. about uparati sir that i couldn't uh, uh, meditate i mean concentrate by meditating so we went deeper into it okay now now what is your uh, clarity on that particular uh, topic of meditation um it is just my recognition that i am actually able to meditate but in different ways sir excellent excellent yeah you you ask a fish to fly yeah it will never fly yes sir so then uh, uh, does it mean that you know it has failed the test of flying no it is able to move it in its own way ah it is able to swim yeah so it can rec it can also uh, you know let's say for example it's going from one place to another place it can also go but inside yeah. the water yes sir so where it is going is important not how it is going yeah sir all right yeah so let's come back okay sir then comes uh, shraddha hmm even this is there in us by birth hmm uh, but only uh, what matters is our recognition matters hmm this is what is required uh, i mean our uh, uh, trust is required i mean trust in what trust in what uh trust in uh, trust in uh, the self itself brahman okay and how does that trust in brahman comes trust so what is the shraddha needed here in the trust in brahman correct but how does the trust in brahman comes trust in brahman it is already there sir okay so let me ask a question slightly differently okay the baby knows the mother correct yes yeah, sir who introduces the father to the baby mother is the mother itself is the mother yeah so is there a similarity here in these two situations no 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 sir if you already have trust in brahman then where is the where is the issue of studying then there is no study for you it is just recognition is in text uh, what we need is recognition correct yes, but to recognize you said you know trust is necessary but you are saying that trust in brahman is necessary if you already are having trust in brahman then where is the study because you already trust it is not yeah. like i trust little i need to develop more trust there is no nothing like that no yes sir ha huh. so what is, is that are, what is that we are then uh, uh, saying here like the way uh, we have not uh, verified and mm. we consider something as true mm. uh, as in case of the babies mm. they they don't know that it's their mother but 
it con- considers uh, that she is someone hmm. uh, who cares for me hmm. similarly uh, we don't uh, we i mean uh, we uh, should uh, consider the questions shraddha in what shraddha uh, how, what is shraddha and shraddha towards what it means trust but towards what towards the brahman but yes. uh, how does that develop how does that trust develop who is who introduces you to uh, brahman it is the mother itself mother yeah in in the, in the case of now uh, let's switch back to our example here who introduces you to the brahman teacher excellent i i did not know that this is the reality someone introduces me to that reality no yes sir the society will introduce me did the society introduce the uh, brahman to you no uh, when my mother said that it is god uh, i mean uh, we went to the temple hmm uh, i have not verified but i consider it as true if it is true then it should not have led to any other problems in life god heals us both pain is mega there deepa ji sorry yes. mega is a prompting amma uh, hearing the voice yeah so who 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 brings the uh, vedanta knowledge to you uh society ha huh? vedanta knowledge these sessions itself sir ah so who so in in that sense who is bringing the vedanta society. because shraddha means what trust trust towards higher truth but who is enabling that trust so who should you trust first uh, listen to vedanta gnana who should you trust first i trust my gurus correct so it is the sadguru the sadguru that you need to trust and the scriptures that you need to trust and then only examine no yes sir without that trust can the recognition even happen no no so if if i don't trust my teacher how can yeah. i ever learn whatever the teacher is teaching yes sir if i don't trust the book that i'm reading how can i ever uh, uh, learn whatever that is there in that book yes yeah, sir so it is shraddha is Ah, trust in shastra and sadguru yes sir it's been a long time i have to go through it once again sir no that's okay you don't have to go through it see <laughs> you you um, it it's not really that is the idea it's not really about remembering and answering ha huh. like how you are now uh, you you are not answering based on your memory of you know n- n- subjects learned you are yes, having sir. a j- discussion with the assimilation of all this uh actually uh, these things what i first mentioned titiksha uparati and all mm. i am able to um, i mean i am practically trying to apply them mm. but when it came to faith uh, mm. 
I think I have not th uh, thought much about it. Ah, ah, correct. But, uh, um by uh, during the sessions i just uh, went through it and understood it and then just left it yeah we have i have not applied it i uh, when we say guru brahma guru vishnu i am just chanting those but not feeling it i believe that's the reason i couldn't answer this <laughs> yeah so that's why the charm don't worry uh, there's nothing right or wrong we are not worried about that so that's why we contemplate. Yeah, so we're digging. Yes, sir. Okay, excellent. So what next? Samadhana. Hmm. Uh, Samadhana is focus. When Samadhana you know... is focus, okay. And uh, this will come when uh, all the uh, five qualities that uh, I mentioned now, the, all these have come. The only then the mind will not deviate. So there will be a focus that I have to realize myself. I mean, the self. Mm. Samadhi. See, there is Samadhana as the same kind of uh, samadhi. Dhi means what? The end. Dhi means buddhi. The intellect. The word okay. samadhi means it's equanimous. The intellect is not wavering up and down. Oh, okay. So that is what you call as focus. Right? But you know, samadhi, samadhi is after uh, or uh, uh, after death, isn't it, sir? Uh, that's another uh, misconception. So we use the word samadhi. Usually, okay, we built a samadhi. Yeah. But samadhi is also an equanimous state where you are totally at peace. Okay, then uh, Swamiji, they actually, while they want to leave the world, they say they, uh, they are going into Samadhi. Uh -huh, Maha Samadhi. It, it essentially means that there is an, an, an equanimous, so there is a perfectly balanced state. So it's not about leaving the body as such. So that equanimous state is what you experience even in the uh, when you're totally at peace with everything that is around you. Yeah. When you have no I want, I don't want, I like, I don't like, there is no such uh, uh, thoughts which are causing the friction in the mind. Then what is your way of being totally at peace? Yes, sir. So, the totally at peace, you are neither uh, I want to die, I want to live. Hmm. This is uh, perfect, isn't it? Yes, sir. That is samadhi. So, yes. samadhana is a quality of equanimous state of mind. Hmm. Mind is not getting up and down. Hmm. And that naturally brings the focus no. to what to what you need to pay attention to. Yeah. To the self. Huh. So if you know during the Vedanta study to the self, during your cooking to the cooking, during the cleaning to the cleaning, yeah. during the uh, you know um, gardening to the gardening, yeah. it is not just about only to the self. Because the quality of concentration or the focus yeah. is not only in one area of life. Yeah. And, and Vedanta helps you to recognize that all these different, different areas are not really different. Yes, sir.
So now coming back to the main question, why all these are important for the study of Vedanta? Uh, because uh, uh, if I'm not able to control my mind or uh, the sense organs, or if I don't have faith in the Guru or uh, anyone who is teaching me Vedanta, then uh, I'll not be able to uh, realize my, I mean, the self. Sir. So all these qualifications are required if, uh, to study Vedanta. Excellent. See, ultimately, like how Shilpa Kalaji said and what you are saying, yeah. it's not the knowledge that is important. Yes. It is a transformation. Yeah. Knowing is being. Mm. Recognition that I am that. Mm. What? That which I am seeking. Mm. It is not a matter of merely a statement. Yes, sir. So knowing is being. So therefore, only with the mind, which is equanimous mm. because otherwise the mind is constantly going to battle, is going to pull you down with the conditioning. Yeah. Do that, do this. That is not right. This is wrong. How can you be God? You have done so many mistakes in the past. Yeah. You, you are not fit to be uh, uh, God. Only pure people are fit to be God. Like that, mm. uh, mind gives you hundred of reasons why what Vedanta is teaching, yeah. you cannot accept. Maybe, maybe you know, those, those people are lucky. Maybe it can happen only to a pure soul like uh, Ramana Maharshi. I am impure. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> All yeah. these are the conditioning of the mind. Yeah, uh, I used to think like that. Before I joined Vedanta, I mean, these sessions, I had that... Uh, uh, thought in my mind. Yeah. And also depending upon the society, there may be different levels of that conditioning. Oh, you are a female. Females are unfit to be uh, uh, realized. Yeah. That also is there. Oh, you are from that caste. You are unfit. Hmm. Oh, you do this job. You are unfit. Oh, you have done that work. No, no, no. You cannot. Hmm. So like that, there's a deep conditioning that comes into the mind because of various things that are in the society, the cultural conditioning. And one more thing, sir, one who is married, they also can't uh, go for this. Uh, you have to become, you have to take uh, sannyasa, you have to uh, do all the tyaga, you have to take sannyasa. Yeah. So like that, yeah. there it's are happened. various kinds of conditioning, no? Yeah, tell me, yeah. Uh, this this should happen only at the old age. You can't go into it now. All this would be there. Correct. So all this conditioning is what essentially stops you from recognition. Yes, sir. Because recognition means what? It is already there. It's, it's always there. It's never been anything else. Yes, sir. It's always been gold. It's uh, it appears as ornament. It's it, uh, but it's always been gold. Yes, sir. So to recognize, you need a mind that has become equipoised. Yes, sir. Because ultimately, it's a correction in the intellect. It's a wrong wrong thinking. That's the only change that is needed. Yes, sir. But the wrong thinking continues to be there because all this conditioning, they pull, they pull. The attraction of the conditioning is heavy. Yes, sir. So, therefore, only when the mind is purified, meaning what? Through karma yoga. Karma yoga means what? Selfless service. Yeah. The feeling that I am doing and I should be enjoying that is our main bondage in life. Yeah. That I am the doer, I am the enjoyer, and I am the one who is supposed to 
enjoy. Yeah. And I know or I don't know something. This is our main bondage. Yes, sir. So the through karma yoga, through bhakti yoga, we first of all have to purify the various impressions in the mind. See, when we say we want to purify, look at this picture. The purification is the reason for my uh, tension, worry, stress and other concerns in life is because of what I am paying attention to in my mind. All the positives and the negatives in the mind. Mm. I am always that divine light but right now I am so occupied with the noise in the mind. Mm. And that is the main bondage, the three bondages. Doer, enjoyer, knower. Mm. And that's why Sadhguru gives us the first sadhana, which is, okay, get involved with seva, be involved with satsanga, listen to Sadhguru. So Sadhguru seva satsanga. Through this, then the impressions in the mind, they start reducing. The negative impressions which pull us down, they start reducing. They start getting replaced with right thoughts, right knowledge, right actions, right speech. So through that, slowly, slowly, there's a recognition. And also, there is a lot more peace. Yes. And that is what enables us to develop the four qualifications to listen to the essential knowledge. Vedanta could mean Veda Anta, end of knowledge. Vedanta also means essential knowledge. You are, you are that. That is essential knowledge. Hmm. And for it to become a reality, meaning for it to be, you know, it's not just about knowledge, it's not just a statement. Hmm. For recognition, yes, that is it. Hmm. The sadhana chatushtaya, the mind has to be prepared for that. So through the karma yoga, bhakti yoga, kriya yoga, hmm. the mind is prepared and the mind has developed the these fourfold qualifications yeah. because vedanta relies on very subtle logic yeah. because vedantic truth cannot be shown by saying look this is right hand this is left hand now see this is right this is left like that it cannot be separated and shown yeah. gold cannot be separated from the ornament and shown Water cannot be separated from the uh, ocean and shown. Mm. But to recognize that water is the essence of ocean, mm. gold is the essence of ornament, mm. and awareness, the pure awareness is the essence in everything that you see in life. Mm. It requires a fineness. The mind has to be settled enough. That, that, that is the True Viveka. Atma from Anatma. Recognition of the Atma from Anatma. To separate the Atma from Anatma. That is the Viveka. That is the quality represented by Hamsa. The bird Hamsa. Yeah. You can separate water from milk. Can you ever separate water from milk? No, sir. Huh. But it, 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 supposedly it can separate and it can drink only milk. So that is the quality. That is the Viveka. Oh, this Vedantic statement, this is the essence. To recognize that, the mind has to be prepared. Only when the mind is uh, away from all the distractions and equipoised. And in that, when that Jnana is given, then the right, using the right discrimination. What is Atma from Anatma? What is changing? What is not changing? That requires a fineness in intellect to separate. And through that natural Vairagya happens. Then there is a natural uh, uh, focus on the higher self. And that is what leads to Aparoksha Anubhuti, which is the final recognition that, yes, I am that. As a teaching, Vedanta says, 
you are that tat tvam asi you are that yes sir at the teaching so see in the teaching there is a you and i the guru is telling shishya you are that sadguru is saying you are that yes sir but the recognition has to happen and, from my side ah then aham brahmasmi yes sir i am that so this is is kind of like the journey or the equation yes sir so that is why in summary it is very important vedantic text can be studied by anybody yes sir but knowing is not being for the knowing to knowing is being for that transformation to happen only when the right qualification is there can the transformation happen yes sir otherwise it will simply be a pandita knowledgeable person any other uh, uh, points anybody wants to bring up padma ji you been very very silent today no sir i am just listening yeah <laughs> is there anything you want to add subtract modify no sir it's all uh, clear actually yeah all right shilpa kala ji anything else from your side no sir all right asha ji rupa ji no sir are you there asha ji all right maybe she is not there wonderful so uh, sorry vijay ji i was in between work sorry no issues no issues yeah. any particular questions or anything that you want to say <laughs> all right good so i had a question i mean not related to this but yeah. uh, is is uh, i don't know if i'm pronouncing it also correctly is drik drikshya viveka and aparoksha anubhuti the, the same or is it different sir there is a particular text called as drik drishya uh, ah. i think it comes in the uh, viveka chudamani drik and drishya okay the seer drik and is the, the self right the seer and the seen ah, drishya yeah. ah. drishya is the seen the world of object ah. ah. drik is the seer Okay, so okay. that also kind of uh, I mean, culminates to atma and atma, uh, something yes. like that, on right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's also viveka. Ah, uh. what you are seeing is drishya. Ah, uh. what are you seeing? You are seeing the tree. You are seeing the bird. You are seeing the uh, mountain. You are seeing the body. You are seeing Object. the um, uh. Uh, mind. Ultimately, uh. everything is being seen in the mind as a thought. Ah, uh. so, so then whatever you are seeing cannot be you. Correct. Hmm. So thought. Uh, what are you seeing the world as? Nothing but as a thought in the mind. Hmm. So that is drishya. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. And who is the light? In whose awareness the scene is being lit? Ah. Uh. That is the seer. Ah. Uh. That is the seer. Ah. Uh. That is you. Mm -hmm. and that is what uh, even in the aparoksha anubhuti in the very beginning there mm -hmm. is a subject object duality right yeah yeah correct the mm -hmm. object is the drishya mm -hmm. but uh, we have to recognize that uh, this is the important viveka mm -hmm. yeah. the i from the mind mm -hmm. i is this light of awareness everything else is mine mm. yeah, ego. Mm. Ah, 
everything else yeah mm. Mm. that is that is what is called as maya mm. our mind mm. which is ever changing okay which is anatma only the awareness is atma or paramatma or brahman or mm. totality is unchanging so the atma and paramatma and brahman are not separate yeah yeah anything else no sir so the last two questions will take up next week sir ha huh. it's already 820 yeah yeah, yeah. what is mutti and yeah. how to attain yeah. so are all of us okay uh, you know that you know we feel we have contemplated sufficiently in the first three and in the next session can we pick up uh, uh, question number 6 and 7 what is mukti and how is it different from aparoksha anubhuti or is it different if so how and how to attain mukti yes sir i am okay sir. yes yeah. sir yes all right um deepa ji has dropped off i think yeah rupa ji you are okay yeah vijay ji all right so next class then you know all of us can come prepared with these two and then we will go into that haryom vijay ji haryom ramakrishna padma ji can you take us through ah, that yes sir असतो मद्गमय तमसो मोतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृत गमय ओ शाति 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 ओं लीड मी फ्रॉम अंट्रुथ टू ट्रुथ डाकनेस टू लाइट इन पर्मनेंस टू पर्मनेंस ओम पीस पूर्णमदूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्ण से पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओं शाति 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 ओं दट इज कंप्लीट this is complete from completeness comes completeness when completeness is removed from completeness what remains is complete om oh, peace 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 nanu nanan badu nanalla ee deha mana buddhi nanalla sachidananda atma शिवनानु नाने शिवोहम 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 आई एम नॉट द बॉडी आई एम नॉट द माइंड आई एम सच्चिदानंद स्वरूपी शिवा शिवोहम 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 आत्मदर्शनम ब्रह्मदर्शनम ब्रह्मदर्शनम सत्यदर्शनम रिकॉग्निशन ऑफ द सेल्फ is recognition of the whole recognition of the whole is recognition of truth om trayambakam yajamahe sugandhim pushti vardhanam urvarukam iva bandhanan mrityor mukchi yamamrutat om trayambakam yajamahe सुगंधिम पुष्टिवर्धन ऊर्वाकम बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता ओं त्रयंबक यजामहे सुगंधि पुष्टिवर्धन ऊर्वाकम बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता विवर्षिप थ्री आइड वन हु इज फ्रेग्रेंट एंड हु नरिशस ऑल 
like the fruit falls off from the bondage of the stem, may we be liberated from death, from mortality. Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu. Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu. Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu. May all beings be happy, healthy, peaceful. Hari Om Tat Sat. Hari Om sir, thank you. Hari Om everyone. Thank you very much, Padmaji. Thank you all. See you all next time. Thank, Thank, Thank you. 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 Thank you.